Greetings, this is Pastor Jeff Riddle from Christ Reformed Baptist Church in Louisa, Virginia, and this is another episode in our ongoing series of reading through the treatise written by Clement of Alexandria. The treatise is titled, Who is the Rich Man That Shall Be Saved? In this episode, which is number six of eight, we're going to be reading through chapters 26 through 30 of this treatise. So let's begin. Chapter 26. The first shall be last and the last first. This is fruitful in meaning and exposition, but does not demand investigation at present. For it refers not only to the wealthy alone, but plainly to all men who have once surrendered themselves to faith. So let this stand aside for the present. But I think that our proposition has been demonstrated in no way inferior to what we promised, that the Savior by no means has excluded the rich on account of wealth itself and the possession of property, nor fenced off salvation against them, if they are able and willing to submit their life to God's commandments and prefer them to transitory objects, and if they would look to the Lord with steady eye, as those who look for the nod of a good helmsman, what he wishes, what he orders, what he indicates, what signal he gives his mariners, where and whence he directs the ship's course. For what harm does one do who previous to faith by applying his mind and by saving has collected a competency? Or what is much less reprehensible than this, if at once by God who gave him his life, he has had his home given him in the house of such men among wealthy people, powerful in substance and preeminent in opulence. For if, in consequence of his involuntary birth in wealth, a man is banished from life, rather is he wronged by God who created him and having vouchsafed to him temporary enjoyment and in being deprived of eternal life. And why should wealth have ever sprung from the earth at all? if it is the author and patron of death. But if one is able in the midst of wealth to turn from its power and to entertain moderate sentiments and to exercise self-command and to seek God alone and to breathe God and walk with God, such a poor man submits to the commandments, being free, unsubdued, free of disease, unwounded by wealth. But if not, sooner shall a camel enter through a needle's eye then such a rich man reach the kingdom of God. Let then the camel, going through a narrow and straight way before the rich man, signify something loftier, which mystery of the Savior is to be learned in the exposition of first principles and of theology. Chapter 27. Well, first let the point of the parable which is evident and the reason why it is spoken be presented. Let it teach the prosperous that they are not to neglect their own, their own salvation, as if they had been already foredoomed, nor, on the other hand, to cast wealth into the sea or condemn it as a traitor and an enemy to life, but learn in what way or how to use wealth and obtain life. For since neither does one perish by any means by fearing because he is rich, nor is by any means saved by trusting and believing that he shall be saved, Come, let them look what hope the Savior assigns them, and how what is unexpected may become ratified, and what is hoped for may come into possession. The master accordingly, when asked, Which is the greatest of the commandments, says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy soul and with all thy strength. That no commandment is greater than this, he says, and with exceeding good reason. For it gives command respecting the first and the greatest, God himself, our Father, by whom all things were brought into being and exist, and to whom what is saved returns again. By him then, being loved beforehand and having received existence, it is impious for us to regard aught else older or more excellent, rendering only this small tribute of gratitude for the greatest benefits." And, being unable to imagine anything else, whatever by way of recompense to God, who needs nothing and is perfect, and gaining immortality by the very exercise of loving the Father to the extent of one's might and power. For the more one loves God, the more he enters within God. Chapter 28. 
The second in order, and not any less than this, he says, is, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Consequently, God above thyself. And on this, on and on his interlocutor inquiring, who is my neighbor? He did not, in the same way with the Jews, specify the blood relation or the fellow citizen or the proselyte or him that had been similarly circumcised or the man who uses one and the same law. But he introduces one on his way down from the upland region from Jerusalem to Jericho and represents him stabbed by robbers, cast half dead on the way, passed by the priest, looked sideways at by the Levite, but pitied by the vilified and excommunicated Samaritan, who did not, like those, pass casually, but came provided with such things as the man in danger required, such as oil, bandages, a beast of burden, money for the innkeeper, part given now and part promised. Which, said he, of them was neighbor to him that suffered these things, and on his answering, he that showed mercy to him replied, Go thou also therefore and do likewise, since love buds into well-doing. Chapter 29. In both the commandments, then, he introduces love, but in order distinguishes it. And in the one, he assigns to God the first part of love and allots the second to our neighbor. Who else can it be but the Savior himself? Or who more than he has pitied us? who by the rulers of darkness were all but put to death with many wounds, fears, lusts, passions, pains, deceits, pleasures. Of these wounds, the only physician is Jesus, who cuts out the passions thoroughly by the root, not as the law does the bare effects, the fruits of evil plants, but applies his acts to the roots of wickedness. He it is that poured wine on our wounded souls, the blood of David's vine that brought the oil which flows from the compassions of the Father and bestowed it copiously. He it is that produced the ligatures of health and of salvation that cannot be undone, love, faith, hope. He it is that subjected angels and principalities and powers for a great reward to serve us. For they also shall be delivered from the vanity of the world through the revelation of the glory of the sons of God. We are therefore to love him equally with God, and he loves Christ Jesus, who does his will and keeps his commandments. For not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? And blessed are ye who see and hear what neither righteous men nor prophets have seen or heard, if ye do what I say. Chapter 30. He then is first who loves Christ, and second, he who loves and cares for those who have believed on him. For whatever is done to a disciple, the Lord accepts as done to himself, and reckons the whole as his. Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me to eat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me to drink. And I was a stranger, and ye took me in. I was naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and he came to me. Then shall the righteous answer, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungry, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? And when saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, and visited thee, or in prison, and came to thee? And the king answering shall say to them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Again, on the opposite side, to those who have not performed these things, verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have not done it unto one of the least of these, ye have not done it to me. And in another place, he that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth not you rejecteth me. Here ends chapter 30, and with that, this ends episode 6 of 8 of this ongoing reading of Clement of Alexandria's Who is the Rich Man That Shall Be Saved? There are 42 chapters total, and so we have two more episodes in which we'll read six chapters in each of those to complete the treatise. hope that you found this uh, episode to be encouraging and helpful, and I'll look forward to speaking to you in the next episode. Till then, take care and God bless.